Hello everyone and welcome back to our equipment system series. In the first episode we set up the master pose component. In this episode we're going to work on our wardrobe actor. The wardrobe actor is going to be the key actor of our system and it's going to handle things such as drawing the character to the screen, handling the UI and also handling the changing of the equipment of the main character. So let's go to add and choose blueprint class and choose actor and we're going to call this one the wardrobe in the wardrobe you can open this up and add two components we're going to add a, a, a spring arm and attach that spring arm we're going to have a scene capture 2d with a spring arm you want to rotate it so it's facing the front at the moment this is by default behind the actor and you know that because the x axis is forwards so this is not the right way so let's make it so it's facing the front of the character we'll go to the z and change that to 180. i'm also going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so changing the target arm length here from 300 to 200. i'm also then going to turn off the collision test of the camera collision because this is not a regular camera, we want it just to render the target. And what we're going to do there is make it so that none of the geometry is going to collide and push the camera forwards. So make sure that's turned off. And then we're going to go to the variable list, choose new variable. And this variable is going to be the actor target that this thing is looking at. Now, the reason why we're doing it like that is because you may want to use this as well for inspecting other actors inside your game. So actor target, we're going to change that type over to actor. And you want to tick instance editable and expose on spawn. This allows us to set and change this variable at the moment of its spawn and creation. Hit compile. Now, by default, the scene capture component 2D is going to capture everything it sees, the actor and the background. What we want though is just the actor. So for that, we can actually change a setting on here to do so. So click on scene capture component 2D, scroll right down, and you want to change the primitive render mode from render scene primitives to the use show only list. That means we can define a list in code and say, hey, just render this one. So go to the event graph, go to begin play, and then drag out your scene capture component 2D. From there, we can do show only actor components. And the actor we're plugging in here is our actor target. Hit compile and you're done here. The last thing we need to do on our wardrobe before we shut it is go to our scene capture component 2D, scroll right down to the bottom, and you'll see the texture target. This is the texture, uh, texture that the camera is printing to. So let's change that from none and do create render target. You can choose a location to store it. I want to put it in the equipment system and I'll call it wardrobe render target. And we are done there. Hit compile and save. Then we're going to go to our third person BP folder. And in here, I'm going to create a custom player controller. So let's go to add blueprint class player controller. And we call mine custom player controller. Go to your game mode and then assign that custom player controller as the player controller class that is spawned in at the start. File and save that. On your custom player controller, open it up, and in here we can use tab to spawn in our wardrobe. So do tab, and then find the keyboard event. And then from there, we're going to take the pressed and set it to spawn actor from class. The class we're going to be spawning is going to be the wardrobe. This spawn transform though, is gonna be the actor which you want it to look at. So in this case, it's gonna be the player character. So get player character. 
the player character we're going to go and drag from the return value pin and type in transform and get actor transform now because we tick the expose on spawn uh, tick box we should see the actor target appear here if you don't see it appear here just go back and check that that tick has happened this in this case is going to be the player character so let's drag that into there when we do a return value out here we're going to drag that out promote to variable and this is going to be called the wardrobe reference Now if we make this toggle, we're going to go back here to tab and when we do press to spawn it, we're going to just drag out that wardrobe ref, get, right click on it and convert to validated get. That's going to check how accurately the wardrobe reference still exists. So if it's been destroyed, this will return is not valid. If it is still existing, it will be is valid. So if it is not valid, we're going to create a new one. And if it is valid, we're going to tell it to destroy itself. So take wardrobe reference, destroy actor. Hit compile, and that's it. Okay, so that will now spawn the actor. But now it's doing a render target, we don't know where it's drawing it to. So let's get that done. Let's go back to our equipment system folder. And I'm going to go into my wardrobe render target and open this up. Now by default, the size X and size Y is really low, 256. I'm going to change that to 2048 for both. And then hit save. Okay, now we've got that done. We're now going to make another folder in here. And call that UI. Inside our UI folder, we're going to create the main wardrobe UI. Interface, widget blueprint. I'm going to call this one wardrobe UI. Open up the wardrobe UI, and in here, we're going to leave the canvas panel as is. Instead, we're going to drag in a horizontal box and plug that into our canvas panel. Click it, and we're going to change the anchor from the top left to cover the whole left hand side. I'm going to go to anchors and you see the whole left hand side here at the bottom. Now I'm going to change the position X to 100, offset top to 100, size we're going to set to 800, offset bottom 100. And you should see something similar to this. Inside that horizontal box, we're going to drag in a vertical box. In fact, two of them. And in between them, we're going to have our uh, scale box. For each of these three, we're going to change them to fill. Now, when filling with three items, it's going to spread the space evenly by thirds. However, we don't want that to be. We want the vertical boxes to be smaller than the one in the middle. So with both of them selected, I'm going to go to the right hand side and change the size from 1 to 0.5. That will make them take up half as much space as they normally would. Inside your uh, scale box here is going to be the image of the character or actor that you're looking at. So let's put an image and plop that into there. Now by default, the scale box is set to stretch the contents to it to fit both, uh, so fit all of it inside our scale box. However, we want it to fill up all the space. So I'm going to change the stretch here from scale to fit to scale to fill. Now fill up the available space, cutting off the sides like so. Then we hit compile and save. Go to the right hand side and go over to your image settings and change the brush here, image there to wardrobe. Render target. We compile and save. Now we just want to show this on the screen. We're not going to worry about any other code for now. We just want to show so we've got something to show that it works. So we're going to close this and go back to our wardrobe 
actor. On begin play, when this thing is first made, we're going to create widget. And the class for this widget is going to be wardrobe UI. From there, we're going to take the return value and promote that to variable. And this will be the wardrobe UI. Okay, last thing we're going to do is add to viewport. Okay, so we're creating a widget window. We're storing its reference for later, and then we're adding it to the viewport. Compile and save that. Now we have a widget attached to our actor here. So when we spawn the actor, it's also going to spawn the widget. But we also want it the other way around. When this actor is destroyed, we want it to destroy the widget. So right click and do end play. You want to drag the wardrobe UI reference out and from that remove from parent. We also want to set the wardrobe UI to nothing. Set that to nothing. Now clear it from our list here. So when pushing play, uh, if I push tab, We'll get our window come up so it's working however we've got a few things here first of all the characters see through the rest of it isn't that's not right when the other way around the other thing is if i move we're going to get movement so what we need to do is make it so that we can't have any movement input when this thing is spawned so back on the wardrobe actor and at the end of begin play we're going to get the uh wait get the player controller and we're going to set input mode uh, so set ignore move input we want we want and tick that Let's test this out and push play. So move around, hit tab. Now I can't move around. Look, I can still move my camera around like this if I wanted to, but ultimately I'm stuck. Now for the image, we're going to go to our wardrobe render target and we're going to right click on this and create a material. Inside your material, we're going to service, we'll set it to a UI mode. So click on the main node here. Change the material domain from surface to UI. And then blend mode, we're going to change from opaque to masked. We're going to take the RGB, put into final color. And then the alpha for the opacity mask, which we're going to one minus because the body was missing, not the background. I want the other way around. So let's put the one minus in there for opacity mask. Hit apply. Then go back to your wardrobe UI. Then in our wardrobe, we click on the image and we change the image to use our wardrobe material. And there you have it. We compile and let's see that in game. Okay, so we've got character, run around like normal, hit tab. And now we've got our character on the screen ready for their menu. Can't move, hit tab again. Ah, and I still can't move. So, easy fix on that one. Go to wardrobe, look at the end play effect here. And we want to get the player controller and make sure it's not cursed the player's movement forever. Take that and, and set uh, ignore move input. And we'll leave that as false. Compile. Now let's test that out. I hit tab. Window will come up. Can't move. Hit tab again. Now I can move. 
and that's your basic functionality of your wardrobe. In the next episode, we're going to flesh out the wardrobe further by adding in category buttons that when you click on them, will show how many items you have available to you in your inventory for equipment. Join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely. We can catch all of my content from just $1 a month or before anyone else. Big thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support each month. Can't thank you enough, so thank you again so, so much. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.